Hey everyone, welcome back to Desktop Inventions. As always, we've got a super packed week full of exciting news this week. So we've got Philips partnering with Prusa to create fixables, which could really be a game changer for the service and support industry. We've got massive price swings from Bamboo Labs, prices are coming down, and we're getting some huge new tariff updates. We've got one of the fastest hypercars in the world made with 3D printing. And finally, we have Robot Swarm Manufacturing an innovative take on swarm manufacturing combined with 3D printing to swarm and conquer. And we've got even more topics to cover, so let's dive right in. Okay, so first up on the list, we have Philips partnering with Prusa to make fixables. So basically, Philips is going to release their 3D models on some commonly broken items, such as trimmer blade combs. Feedback from the community on YouTube and printables has been great. I think people think it's an amazing idea we're saving waste, it's good marketing material, and it's better for the environment and better for the customer if you have uh, access to a 3D printer, that is. So obviously we have Joseph Prusa to thank. He had a heavy hand in getting this deal done with Philips and getting this deal made and promoted. So Philips is launching this service initially in the Czech Republic, which is why I could only find their models on their Czech website, no English version yet. But fear not, because as part of this deal, Philips has made their own account on printables already with almost 2,000 followers. So they're now uploading these 3D models directly onto printables, so you can find them there. So I think this is a great move by Philips for sustainability, it's good marketing piece, and overall it's going to be a win for the consumer, I believe. I hope we can see other companies follow this path in the future as well. So next up we have bamboo prices are dropping and we've got some huge tariff updates. So if we look on the Bamboo Labs website, we can see the price of the Carbon X1 has now dropped down to just $12.49 back to where it was. Again, this price drop is for the US only, um, and it's a lot better than where we were sitting just last week at almost $1,500. So you can see that price trend here on this visual I made from the Gosh app dashboard. This video is not sponsored by Gosh, but this was just a neat tool I found and was able to bring up some historical price tracking to give us a visual of the Bamboo Labs printer pricing. So here you can see the price trend for the X1 Carbon, as well as the P1S and the A1 Mini. So all these are following a similar trend, just dropping the prices in the last couple days. So I wasn't able to find good price history on this app from Creality or Flashforge or other 3D printers, but mainly Bamboo Labs at this point. But I've added them to the dashboard so we can start tracking that in the future. So let me know if you've seen other 3D printers prices dropping in the past week from all of this tariff news. So now let's get into the tariff updates. So first of all, we'll talk about the overall retaliatory tariffs. Um, tariffs on Chinese goods into the US were previously facing up to 145% tariffs after these escalations between the US and China. But just last weekend, the US and China had a meeting in Switzerland and discussions went really well. They made a lot of progress and rates have now cooled to just 10% as a baseline, plus 20% for fentanyl related accusations. So next up is the Section 301 tariffs. This is a separate set of tariffs independent of the retaliatory tariffs. So under the Section 301, most 3D printers fall under the HTS code 8477.59.01 or 8485.20.0000. From as far as I can tell, all the hobbyist 3D printers under these two HTS codes are completely exempt from a 25% tariff. And that hasn't changed so far in the past year, so no changes there. And then finally, we have possible updates on the de minimis exemption. So for the past many, many years, uh, goods under $800 shipped from China over to the US came over with a 0% tariff. So just last month in April, it was proposed to jack up those rates from 0% to 120% starting in early May, but those never got put into place. So now as of May 16th, these proposed rates of 120% have been proposed to reduce to 54%, or an alternate flat fee of just $100 on shipping. Nothing has been enacted yet, these are still just proposals, but as of now, they're set to go into place on June 1st. But we'll wait and see what actually happens. Currently, it's still 0% for items less than $800. So if this de minimis exemption does go up to a 54% tariff on goods less than $800, this will have an outsized impact on lower cost 3D printers, it'll have an impact on filaments coming in, and, all, and it will also have a big impact on things like Timu and Alibaba coming into the US. So next up, we have an exciting story about a 3D printed hypercar, the Zinger 21C. And this thing is wicked fast. So it's got a 1.9 second, zero to 60, with a top speed of over 250 miles per hour. 
This thing is featuring a 2.88 liter V8 with twin turbos cranking out over 950 horsepower. And on top of that, they've got a pair of electric motors powering the front wheels that are adding an additional 3 to 400 horsepower. This thing is a beast. It's laid out like a fighter jet. It's got one seat in the front and then one seat directly behind that, just like a fighter jet cockpit. I wonder if they have a seat ejection mechanism as well. That'd be pretty cool. So Divergent is the company that is manufacturing these cars with a ton of technology and some giant metal 3D printers to make parts of the chassis. Looking on their website, we can see some of the parts from the chassis and the frame that are definitely made by 3D printing, and it doesn't even look like they were designed from humans. So it looks like these parts are probably designed with generative design, which is where humans will go in and give inputs and requirements for the parts, and then a computer like AI will go and crank out hundreds or thousands of design iterations to find the most efficient design for that part. So with generative design, these parts often look more complex and like something that came out of nature rather than designed by humans. So Divergent said it takes about a day to print each of these larger chassis parts, and then in total, it takes about a thousand hours of manufacturing to build the entire car. That sounds like a lot, but they said compared with traditional methods for this type of hypercar, it typically would take over 1600 hours. So the claim is this new method is a lot more efficient and saving time with using this 3D printing technology. And in case you're wondering, this car has a low, low price of just $2 million. So just like most hypercars, this is out of reach for 99.9999% of all consumers. So you're not going to see me standing in line waiting to buy one of these. And finally, we have Swarm Manufacturing Robots. This is a concept that's been around for a while, but I just ran across this uh, on a YouTube video from the company AM Bots. So the concept is pretty simple. It's essentially a system for 3D printers to work together in unison to swarm a part to be 3D printed. So the company came up with this technology starting in the mechanical engineering department of the University of Arkansas back in 2015. Now it's grown into a complete system with multiple types of robots ranging from printing bots to pick and place bots and even laser welding bots. So let's check out a quick video of these swarm robots in action. So here we can see the swarm manufacturing of a mini electric vehicle. So we have all sorts of robots here. We have the printer robot, the pick and place robot, the laser welding robot, and a transport robot. So we can see a couple printing robots going to work right away to each individually print their own parts. So then we have the transport robot, which we can see is aligned based on these grid features on the floor. And it's going around and moving the printing robot to a new place to print another part. So now it looks like we have the pick and place robot that is dropping the wheel and motor assemblies into the printed chassis piece. Now the pick and place robot is putting a 3D printed cover on top it looks like. And this is really cool. We've got a laser welded robot that is laser welding or melting that plastic and fusing that top cover on. And then the last step here we've got another printing robot printing the top cover onto the vehicle. So I couldn't find any information if this technology is already in use for any mass scale manufacturing today. But I think the concept is super interesting and it very much seems like the future with swarms of robots coming together to swarm and complete the manufacturing of products. So I think this technology is super awesome and wanted to share it. So what fields or industries do you think this technology could be applied to? Leave a comment down below if you have any ideas. Okay, that's it for the main news topics. Let's head over and see the Thingiverse and Printables Prints of the Week. All right, first up on the Thingiverse print of the week, we have this print and place platform jack from International 3D. So this is a bit of an older model, but it's a classic and a really awesome one. So this prints in place, just like it says, standing up straight up like this. And what's cool is it has tons of uh, mechanisms and linkages that all happen while it's printing in place. So what happens is you screw in this uh, screw here and this platform jack will lift up slowly but surely. And that's the maximum extension. It can lift up about five inches. So really awesome to see that all of this uh, complexity and mechanisms can be printed directly in place. And there's some floating features there. So some of the print quality is not that great, but it is uh, really cool to uh, show to people that this can be 3D printed. And then it's quite satisfying to, uh, to play with it and to screw and unscrew this uh, mechanism so a five out of five recommend on printing this print in place platform jack. 
And for the printables print of the week, it is none other than the Philips Fixables One Blade. So this is the one millimeter uh, comb for your shaver. And you can tell that Philips did go to quite a bit of effort to make sure that this part is 3D printable. So it prints laying on the bed like this, and then it's got these uh, unsupported bridges here, and you don't need to use support material, and the quality of it turned out pretty good. I don't have the Philips razor to uh, combine this with, but I'll trust that uh, it's going to fit and work just fine. So that is it for the printables print of the week. And that's gonna wrap up the topics for this week's video. What did you find most interesting? Was it Bamboo Labs prices coming down with the huge tariff updates? Or perhaps the Philips and Prusa powerhouse creating fixables? Or maybe it was the Zinger hypercar or the robot swarms that were definitely some fun topics as well. So I'm excited to announce I've got my first Patreon subscriber. So thank you so much to Vicky for being the first one to come and join the Patreon party. So if you enjoyed watching the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or consider joining me in Patreon to help support the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.